Welcome back, everyone. We're here live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program, theCUBE, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is our exclusive coverage of HP Discover 2013, and live in Barcelona, Spain, for the European version, which is essentially a, lot, a bigger version, believe it or not, than the, than the US version. A lot of activity here uh, in terms of just interest, et cetera, always, always fun. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, the co-founder of Wikibon.org, and we're excited to have Robert Youngs John, the SVP, General Manager of HP HB Autonomy, CUBE alumni, second time on. Last time we had a great conversation. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, uh, great to be here. You, you're one of our most uh, ex expected guests here. Excited to have you on because last time we, we could have gone for an hour because you, you run and, and involved in the, the portion of HP that Dave and I love the most in terms of out in the industry, big data. And it's not just big data in terms of like normal big data. It's a lot of the fun stuff. It's the tech under the hood. Yeah. It's the applications on the end. It's the sex appeal on the front end. And it's the geekiness underneath the hood. So you have a great job. I <laughs> so, enjoy it. Yeah, and we like talking to you, so welcome <laughs> yeah. back. So, so my first question, what's new? What's changed since we last met? Um, what amazing things have you, have you worked on and shipped and uh, what's happening? Well, the big thing we've been working on, which I'm really excited about actually, and we'll make the official announcement today uh, in George Kadifa's speech, is we've taken a lot of the functionality we have in Idle, and we're now making it a service. So we've got Idle on demand. So we're taking all these services like video uh, recognition, like voice recognition, like sentiment detection, and we're going to make them available as individual web services. So developers can come to this, and they can string these together to produce cool functions. And one, one we played with actually, which I, I thought was really cool is, um, and you're probably aware that IBM Watson has done this Jeopardy program, and they put thousands of developers at it, millions of dollars. But well, we had a couple of developers who in an afternoon hackathon put together an app that's pretty much as good uh, in two hours. You know, using Wikipedia as the info source, and then using these chain idle on demand connectors uh, as the way in which the app works together. So you took a couple of engineers during a <laughs> hackathon, <laughs> okay, and I'm assuming you used some Compute power behind it. Oh yeah, yeah, some yeah. Software. <laughs> yeah. There was some uh, software. So yeah. that's good leverage. I mean, that's pretty good. That's yeah. that's a good ROI, wouldn't you think? I think it's super. <laughs> I mean, and our, my big vision, which is real different from when we talked last time, is that if we do our job, you know, a year from now, eighteen months from now, we have tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of developers who every day are thinking about how they leverage idle on demand, the functionality we have there to create you know, great world-beating applications. So I want to ask you, because what's exciting about your job is you've got, you get to put your toe in the water of the future and also play with some of the intoxicating um, viral successes, like you, we were talking before you came on about Snapchat, a lot of these applications like Uber. These web scale apps are, are changing the consumer experience and you know, with the consumerization of our world, these are all big data applications. They are real time, a lot of the, the, the key table stakes of what these apps are, are, are building on are real-time communications, whether it's a Node.js, accessing databases, using uh, the cloud computing, all that is the messaging here. This is HP's kind of wheelhouse. So, so uh, tell us, what are, what are you seeing in the vision out there for these new requirements, uh, for whether they're startups, whether they're applications, to be a developer what, in an enterprise or a consumer, what's the key thing that's driving the innovation? Is it the, the data? Is it just the consumer demand? What are you seeing? I, I think it's, it's ultimately the data. Uh, and it's ultimately finding new ways of extracting value from things that pre previously didn't think had value. You know we use this term dark data. Um, you know, I'm not sure what it means, but I think it's a good descriptor for a lot of the information that exists. It might spin out of your cell phone network, it might spin out of your log files, your click streams, and yet nobody really knows what the value in it is. And as we begin to bring the tools to bear, whether it's our tools in uh, autonomy or the tools in Vertica, we can shed light into this dark data and allow people to find trends and, and other things going on they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So imagine that you can, uh, as we're showing here on one of our demos, you can actually change media coverage of an event in real time based on social media feedback. Um, you know, it, it's an amazing application. You can change that, this is a bit frightening, the rules of the game based yeah. on how people are behaving in the game. And, and the uh, timing's really good, right? Because there aren't a lot of really good big data apps that you can get off the shelf, and they're because they're hard to build. 
you need domain expertise, you need tech, you need data scientists, and you need tool sets. So, so the market is really has a huge appetite for this type of capability. My, my question is, so I get, we get the developer thing, you got to have that, any software, any good software company yeah, has yeah. to appeal to developers. What do you actually envision selling? Are you going to sell more sort of idle licenses? Is it more vertical licenses? Is it more hardware? Obviously you're not going to count that in, in your group, but what is it that the HP software group ultimately envisions selling that's going to drive revenue and, and really increase the software component of HP as a company? I think it's a hybrid of two things. I think the first is underlying infrastructure, and for example, for idle on demand, we actually don't know what the business model is right now. I mean, okay. I told the team, stop fretting about the business model, go and do it. Fair enough, John and I talk about that all the time. We don't know how we're going to make we'll money. We'll, we'll go worry go about that down the track. Value, create right? value, create yeah. value yeah. first. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, but we, then I think we've also started building some real world heavyweight big data apps on top. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we announced an app that we're really proud of called the Digital Marketing Hub. And what this is doing is uh, trying to change the way marketeers think about uh, direct campaigns. Because right now what tends to happen is you do a segmentation, you then develop your marketing campaign against that segmentation, and then some weeks later you look at what the results are, and then it's sort of too late to get back in the cycle. Now we thought with the big data tools we have and the ability to do a lot of this analysis in almost real time, maybe we could do that segmentation dynamically and therefore get much better return rates on campaigns. So we produced the software, it uses Vertica capability, it uses idle capability. We demoed it to a bunch of marketeers in New York and I mean literally the house went mad because this is what they all dreamt of, the ability to dynamically segment their market in real time so the offer presented to any individual user was custom built for that user at that time. You know, that's a great example of how you build big data value on top of a set of core tools. Yeah, so the Digital Marketing Hub, you announced that, that so that's something that a client's going to put in their facility on premise and maybe at some point, or maybe today. Well, it's a, I mean, it's a, yeah, I would do both. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed about whether people try to absorb these things as services or whether they choose to uh, run them themselves. I think that's a business decision they have to take. It's not a technology decision. I mean, frankly, I would err on the side of a service because frankly it's easier and for us to manage. That as yeah, a service absolutely. Today, right? so you're, absolutely. You're saying here's a choice, you pick it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Robert, you have a keynote uh, today at 4.30. It's your presentation. Give us a little tease. Just of before what the cocktail hour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I got that slot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to work a test. You got to make some phone Certainly. calls. <laughs> get, yeah, get, up, bump up your, uh, your uh, profile yeah. a little bit. Well, you're on the cube early in the morning. You get the, you get the best slot here. Dave and I are, are, are awake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you, so let's talk about what, you know, what you're going to present, because one of the things that Dave and I were talking about at, uh, at Amazon reInvent when we were covering that event, and then also we had our own big data event in New York City um, and, uh, around Hadoop World, Big Data NYC, was this humanization uh, element. The, there's a real art and science of big data, and on the art side, it's really more about humanization. The, 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 the some of these applications are very geeky, which is cool, but what's also happened is you're starting to see the applications of the insights be very, very uh, humanizing. Changing human behavior, a societal benefits, just seeing education. These, a lot of you know, big data applications are moving in that. What's your vision on that? What do we need to do to make things more humanized around the data? Well, you know, I'm not sure that that's some, something that we as the technology infrastructure you know, put as our highest priority, and I'll tell you why. Because actually, at the end of the day, I think if you're going to really get value out of this, you've got to energize the developer community. It's the developer community who understand the segments in which they operate. It's developers in the healthcare space who are going to say, I know now how I can take these structured data streams that are coming out of all the instruments that exist in our hospital, here's the mortality rates, and here's all the unstructured information. I can bring that all together now to have a solution that, that matters and allows people to assess the, the sort of outcomes people are getting against various treatments. So you're so you're saying essentially it's early. Let's get the platform and tooling in place and let the outcome of that be whatever yeah, that is. I'm right? a big believer. That's how software works. Yeah. That's how the best software works. You create an infrastructure. You create a set of tools. And if you're smart, you'd get as many developers out there who come into work every day thinking I'm going to build great code on these guys' platforms. On the tooling front, where you got? What are your areas that you're investing in the most right now? Obviously, when you say you tell your developers, don't worry about the business model, totally agree on that, It's because it's early, it's a creative process as well. What are you telling your developers, what are you guys working on right now that's, that's a key priority for the, on the software side? Uh, it's the thing I mentioned a moment ago, it's idle on demand. It's taking the, the, you know, the function of idle, which was a very large monolithic product, breaking it out into services, 500 or so of these services, making those services available as REST APIs so they can be accessed by any developer and chained together to make really smart applications. Now that's actually in some ways the easy bit. The hard bit is making sure the plumbing underneath exists, so when someone starts to throw those APIs at really scale data sources, it continues to work. 
Um, so, you know, there's a lot of hard stuff there on service brokers and all that sort of stuff we have to work so through. So I'm going to assume that HP, I'm going to trust HP is going to figure that piece out. All right? I mean, <laughs> there's a few companies that I'm going to trust to, to do that. Uh, Thank you. one of them, okay? No, seriously. Now, and I know you haven't figured out the business model yet, but what are, what are you envisioning of the choices? You, you can sell a database, you can license those web services, you can sell that big monolithic thing which you're trying to break up. Um, you can develop new apps like the Digital Marketing Hub or sort of all of the above. Is it, is it an all of the above strategy? I, I think it is all of the above. Yeah. I mean, I think for a Digital Marketing Hub, that's an application yeah. that's uh, orientated towards a particular user com, uh, community. Yep. They will pay for that. Is. Yes, absolutely. I think when you start to be saying selling Idle as a service, we're going to have to find some analog for value. And that might be, given it's ultimately about data, it might be on the amount of data consumed. It might be on the data object you associate with the services. Use as many services as you like, but if you want a terabyte of data behind it, there's a fee. If you want three terabytes, there's another fee, and so on. So, I mean, that's speculating, because we haven't worked yeah, it through. Yeah, new licensing models or things yeah. that the, you know, the world is playing around with. Yeah, but the, but the, but the thing I, I want to make sure we do is we get early traction and adoption. I don't want people sit there worrying about the commercial model, either from a developer point of view or from our R&D perspective. Yeah, guess get traction first. Let's get, I'm, and, and that's what everybody does in this space. So I don't think it's new news. But I think it's important that we well, work that way. Well, it's not new news, but if it's, a, <clears throat> if it's something that you're being essentially measured on by Meg and the board, is, okay, we, we care about traction. We don't really care so much about HP software as X percent of HP revenue yet. <laughs> you know, we care about traction so that we can get to that next point. Is that the right way to think about it? Well, but it you know how this works in large companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You do whatever yeah, you like, but make your P&L. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I have to fund point. this within my well, business Well, you're a general model. manager, you have a P&L, right? I mean, you have a, you have to produce yeah, some I, results. I, I can do trade-offs, and providing I can attract the value. So, I mean, we, you know, in another area, we have a, an extraordinarily high value application that we built on these tools, which is our so-called digital safe product. Now, Digital Safe is, you know, but face it sounds pretty boring. It's an archive to make sure banks and other institutions can meet the needs of regulators. Um, it's massive scale. That's the big issue. It doesn't operate at, you know, hundreds of thousands of mails. It operates at trillions of messages. You know, and building that, which is incredibly high value to those financial institutions, is a way we can monetize our IP and in turn then make the investments yeah. in the underlying technology. I mean, technology. you guys are sitting on a gold mine. I mean, obviously, everyone in big data can hand wave that. There's no doubt about it. And I like your approach uh, about the developers. So I want to kind of expand on that line of questioning of the ecosystem. So, What's your strategy of the ecosystem? Because you need to you have an ecosystem. I mean, internally, I can see you guys handing out the candy to people. And we've been covering HP now for three years with theCUBE, so I can say to everyone out there, autonomy is definitely infiltrating <laughs> the different yeah. divisions of HP. So that's good, seeding, yeah, seeding yeah. Uh, autonomy around. But to the external world, is there an ecosystem? What's your strategy there? And how do people get involved? Well, the ecosystem, I think, to me, starts with, you know, and, and I've got this sort of focal event that we're going to hold next year, we haven't quite uh, determined the date yet, but it'll be in the first half of next year, a developer conference. And my view is people come to the developer conference, they get the developer kit, um, they get the code they need, and then you have a little contest and see who's come up with the best code that day. Uh, and that's the way you start this flywheel yeah. moving. I mean, you know, I was really impressed with, uh, with what I saw at Force.com. Not so much because of the product they talked about, but the fact they get 100,000 people, many of them are developers, to come real. to this. Where, you can be real cynical about everything Salesforce, else. Salesforce, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but they got 100,000 developers there. That's what I dream of doing well, in this Well, if you space. buy out San Francisco, you can get anyone <laughs> there. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. We're anyway. not quite at that ticket level well, yet. We got a little flavor of that, the Vertical, the Vertical User Conference last August in Boston. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, mean, I was very impressed with the quality of the, you know, the, the customer. Yeah, but that was a but, user but, conference. But it was a user conference, yeah. it wasn't the, the yeah. developer. A developer conference to me is, it's geeky, it's got code, yeah. streams, it's got breakouts where people say, how you do this for this environment, if you happen to be using these development tools, how would you access these services? You know, real world examples that give people the confidence they can walk out the room and go and produce something that they can then put on the market that's going to change the world. I think you're right, you have to be the steward there, you have to have an event. You have to enable the developers, you have to give them distribution and value. Developers are very fickle, but they're also very loyal. You give them the right tooling, as we yeah. know, uh, and distribution. So, so, I pretend I'm a developer. We have the CrowdChat application, we did a demo last night, and I say, hey, you know what? I love, I, lo I, want, I want to, we're a small team, I want to build on autonomy. What do I do? Well, I think the first thing you'll do is you'll go to www.idleondemand.com and that will show you all these services we're exposing. So I download some code? Yeah, and it'll show you all the code snippets you need, it'll okay. show you how to 
bridge uh, these REST APIs into whatever development environment you're using for crowd chat. And you have a marketplace, can I push my app to HP customers? That's, that's, that will be the next stage of this, we're building that okay. right now. Um, Vertica have already done that, they've done a great job there, we'll probably just follow them, there's no point in recreating it. Uh, interestingly, they're using some old WebOS technology, <laughs> so we're getting some value out of that. <laughs> okay, um, good. You know, that's the, that's the cycle you want to try yeah. to create here. Yeah, and, and what's your take on the current developer community? You mentioned Salesforce. Um, open source is a, bit, a big part of that community as well. You know, HP's in OpenStack and among other things. What, what, what communities are you watching right now um, on, on whether it's analytics or you know, code on the database side or anything in between? Is there any? I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open-minded about that right now. And I'm trying to, maybe this is a mistake, but I'm trying to take a very broad approach. Uh, because I actually think the functionality we have plays in so many different business segments. You know, if we can do, I mean, trivial examples like sentiment detection or metadata creation out of legal cases, they're going to you know, uh, appeal to a very specific marketplace. So for example, if you're writing software for the legal profession, you're going to want something that can generate metadata from a legal case coming in. And you know, we have an API that will do exactly that. Yeah, you, you can, can just embed that in, bundle yeah, it in. In fact, I had to Service be told, catalog. I had to be stopped using a demo because someone sent me a legal letter. I decided I'd use that as the demo. It was a little bit too close to the wire for us to, uh, yeah. to actually put up so on stage. So let me ask a question a little differently. Yeah. So, and I, 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 I struggle sometimes with the, the, the market spaces. So you got kind of infrastructure as a service plus, you know, doing Amazon doing its thing with developers. And then you got sort of Salesforce, sort of SaaS minus. Right, and then you got the pass yeah, market yeah. space. So is that pass market space, you know, how real is it? How much of a demand is there for that middle piece? And, and it, or is it going to be a sort of combination of the top and the bottom layers? What's your take uh, That's on that? a really interesting question because I think the intellectual case for pass is very, very strong, but it hasn't yet caught up right. in, in terms of the reality of the marketplace. Yeah. Uh, I actually think that's ultimately where this goes. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, it starts with people say, just give me a virtual machine and then I'll do what I like in it. Right. Then what you do is you start abstracting functions that are common across virtual machines and you start to develop pseudo pass, if you, if you know what I mean, somewhere, somewhere well, between I and B, uh, and then right, you move it's, it, it, it's, it's more logical to do it independent of platform or independent of, of applications. Yeah. And so, so yeah. you know, the way we're looking at idle on demand is a series of REST APIs that will be pretty much neutral as to which platform you run them on. Um, and then you'll connect that to object store of your choice. It could be Hadoop. Uh, we try to build our own object store. We've actually got some nice ideas to do that with Vertica. Uh, we might have a policy manager that we'll have there as a set of services, and you'll bring those things together uh, uh, to create an application. I mean, we're thinking about backup, for example, and backup is just an object store versus a policy manager. Yeah. Uh, so if you create two generic instances there, you can start to produce real cool apps by just matching policy manager uh, to the object store. Archiving is just a special case. Um, and so on. Well, and then if you can yeah. have the data be accessed by those different yeah, you know, platforms, absolutely. Yeah. instead of all the data being locked into a backup platform. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you're right, uh, in the past piece, a lot of smart people are, are betting that that's a big market. And, uh, I think ultimately that's where it ends up. I mean, I think that, you know, like most of these markets, it goes through evolution, and the simple first evolution is, you know, I've got these virtual machines I need to set up, I don't have capacity in my data center, I just want to send them somewhere else. Uh, and that's great. Fine, but as soon as you find that, you know, if you're writing apps that require media streaming, or you're writing apps that require some sort of common functionality, you're going to say, do I really want to write this? Do I want to write my own MPEG encoding mechanism? No, of course I don't. I want to buy it as a service. And that's when you start to get it transitioning from IAAS yeah, yeah. to PaaS. Okay, now notwithstanding that you haven't had, had it all, you don't know, have it all figured out yet, and you got to hit your numbers, um, a year from now, where do you want to, where do you want to see, you know, your, your group, your, what do you want to have accomplished? Well, I, I build this sort of by, in a bifurcated way. I mean, I think I need to get the app side of our business where we deliver direct customer value with the applications we've written on top of Idle, you know, growing and fulfilling the market opportunity I know is there. I mean, compliance, regulation, whatever you think about it, it's a gold mine right yeah. now. It's a gold rush. You know, most of these banks, you know, they switch from saying, can I produce a new derivative to can I avoid getting fined? <laughs> you know, that's a bigger <laughs> P&L driver <laughs> than before. Uh, uh, uh. So we go, yeah, right. we can help that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I need to get that moving. But at the same time, I think for the long-term effectiveness of certainly what we do and what Vertica does, enabling a developer community is the heart and soul of it. And our measure of our success is going to be the extent to which we can create a developer conference that people are going to want to come to, and ultimately, a bit like Salesforce, they're going to want to pay to come to, uh, rather than us having to fund it. Yeah. And you know, people are going to go out there and create. And what's beauty for the system is you've got an app developer who knows you know, a specific part of the retail market, or a specific part of the healthcare market, or a specific part of the market manufacturing market. We will never know. That domain expertise. That domain key. expertise, Absolutely. they'll do it, and they'll create yeah. apps based on our platform. 
And that's, I think, the way that you can actually see this big data trend that we're in right now as being the early phases of what we saw maybe 20 years ago with a relational database. Yeah. It's a new market, it's a new ecosystem that's worth potentially trillions of dollars mm -hmm. being created, and our objective is to be you know, the infrastructure provider to that. That's exciting. Awesome. Um, I mean, not the way I'm ambitious or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's important. I think you yeah. know, the developer focus is really a great message um, and very relevant given what you guys have right now. It's a, it's, it's a great platform, it's a gold mine, and the market's growing like crazy. Uh, I want to get the final word in for you um, to, to share with the folks um, that are new to the, that might be new to new to, to, to your area. What's the most exciting thing happening in the world of big data meets applications? Why, why is this so, why are we all, all so excited about this? Why, why is this market so on fire in your mind? I think it's on fire because for the first time people are seeing tools that are going to allow them to expose value in data they're just collecting almost as an ancillary to everything else that they do. So you take click streams, you take sensor data, you take um, you know, anything of that sort, suddenly you can get value out of it in a way that traditional tools could never do. You know, in this field that autonomy works on human information, because you can start to e extract value from human information, you can again start to build new applications, get new insights you could never do in the past. And those are the two areas where big data is growing most. I mean, I'm just about to go to a different device. I'm going to expose my, um, my three-cornered analysis of big data into what I call machine data, into business information, and into human information. Everybody thinks about business information, but actually, it's the slowest growing part, it's the best understood part, and it's the one where most tools exist. Most of the growth is happening in what we think of as machine data, uh, or human information. Yeah. And the neat thing about our strategy is with Vertica and Autonomy, we've got tools that absolutely hit those two spaces. It's beautiful, and you know what? Real time means real time, right? So, yeah. very exciting. Uh, Robert, always a pleasure. I mean, I, I could sit and talk all day with you. You're a great, uh, great uh, legend in the, in the community, and, and congratulations, you're running a great part of the business, uh, intoxicating really at many levels. The value extraction is so amazing, and this is such a good beginning. Of, of, a, of a massive transformation. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're here talking big data, getting value out of the data. This is theCUBE, we're streaming the data live here on theCUBE, and we'll be right back with our next guest.